Well, thank you, Michael, for that introduction. I'm Victor Zhao, the president of the National Academy of Medicine. And uh, thank you, Kati and Drew, for taking time to speak with me today. Let's dive right in. Uh, you know, your research is remarkable. It's really changed the world and saved millions of lives. And I would say to you, on behalf of everyone in the world, thank you. Now, I'm a scientist like you, and Drew, I think you're a department of medicine. I'm a physician scientist as well. So I, I'm particularly interested in your research. Can I begin with a question? The two of you published a paper showing that modifying the mRNA through four nucleoside modification can only escape the innate immunity activation, but also increases stability. Can you tell me a little bit about that research? I mean, it's such an important observation. So th that research actually started around 1998. And back then, RNA couldn't be used therapeutically. And what Katie and I first discovered is that it was incredibly inflammatory. Uh, over those years, we started to investigate why. Uh, back then, only a couple of RNA sensors were known. So in our studies, we discovered a couple more sensors, uh, and that finally led us to figuring out how to get rid of that inflammatory potential. Um, so you were critically important in this collaboration with Drew, right? Well, what, what brought you guys together? And in really in a matter of a year, uh, from your 2004 paper to 2005, you came through with some breakthrough observations. Can, can you tell me a little bit about how you guys got together, met, and worked together so collaboratively? Yes, so it is, it is true that we met at the copy machine. It was not a made-up <laughs> story. When Drew uh, came to Penn and he was the new person there, and then, um, you know, we had a copy machine in the end of the hallway, and then that's where we started to talk, and uh, Drew was mentioning that he's working on uh, vaccines and he wants to develop a uh, HIV vaccine, and I brag about that I can do RNA because at that time already I was at Penn, and about like 10 years I was working me making messenger RNA for therapy. And this is how we started up. And then I offered Drew to make mRNA for his program, and then uh, he tested out, and then he was very happy that this is a perfect RNA because it uh, uh, coded for uh, the antigen, the viral antigen, and it also activated the immune system. Of course, later it turned out that it's not the right immune activation, but this is how we started. Of course, I was immediately disappointed when he learned that it is immunogenic because I want to use mRNA for therapeutics, uh, especially for treating stroke patients. And, you know, that was the final goal. And then that's why, you know, the immunogenicity of the RNA was detrimental for, for this program. So that's why we started to invest in how we can make non-immunogenic. Yeah. Well, people talk about how collaborations start, the coffee pot, water cooler, and now you have a coffee machine. <laughs> that's really great. So, you know, um, your partnership is really special. What do you think it makes it so special? And how have you maintained this over the years? Yeah, I, we needed each other. So I had the knowledge, which was, uh, you know, mostly the RNA. Andrew was is the immunologist. And then... We needed each other. So if I made an RNA, Drew was investigating and together we figured out that uh, what should we do and how to proceed. So we had a complementary. So we had overlapping and then, of course, a lot of complementary, you know, and additional knowledge. Drew? So I, I think it's also both of us seek knowledge and, you know, our, our greatest goals aren't to accomplish huge things but it, it's to understand and, and to learn. And I think that that's what drove us for all of those years. Kata, in particular, many scientists who make major discoveries sometimes met with really a lot of skepticism. I know in my own career, I faced that as well. So tell us about the adversity you faced in your career. I know you were in Hungary, you came to Temple and Penn, 
Now, of course, you are in BioNTech. Uh, what keeps you going? What's, um, what drives you and what's your advice to others you know, who face the same kind of initial skepticism? How do they overcome this? Give us a little advice. <laughs> you, so, you know, that um, to stay on um, and focus uh, on the project, uh, if, uh, if it is not uh, moving ahead, so that uh, um, that is not advisable. But what we have experienced, and in my in my uh, during my work, is that I could see uh, um, sometimes incremental uh, improvement in the project, and sometimes it's a big jump, and then we understand better. And so there were always progress there, and so I could see the future that how useful it something will be, and and of course there are naysayer and others and then uh, you know in in our our profession we seek for criticism you know constructive criticism and uh, incorporate to our project and making it better but uh, you know kind of criticism sometimes i got then i just uh, ignored because those were not constructive and um, you just stay on the track and then I don't know that's what I that's what I was doing. You know, focus, focus, and and uh, proceed. True. Your thoughts? No, I mean, I, I completely agree. I mean, Katie didn't paint some of the dark times where we would submit grants, they wouldn't get accepted. We would submit papers and didn't understand the reviews. Um, we, you know, we knew something was there. So we kept at it. Uh, you know, I, I, I never tell my, my grad students to spend 20 years working on something that isn't working. But we, we knew that this was important. We knew it had you, you know, enormous potential. So we kept it up. Your technology, your discovery is such an important foundation for the current mRNA vaccines, therapeutics. And how does it feel to know your invention is saving millions of lives and helping the world to control the pandemic? Uh, tell me about this. Don't be modest about this. I, I uh, you know, I was asked whether I feel vindication and feeling that I say so. And I don't feel that. I am just very happy that uh, the vaccine was created and uh, what I have done is also contributed and many, many other scientists to work incorporate and uh, also contributed to this success. And uh, I want to uh, take the opportunity always to reflect that the importance of other scientists, the teachers and, and the colleagues at the Big Pharma, that uh, they did an excellent job to make sure that this uh, vaccine will get to the people. And that's what I... That's how I feel. I am just happy that uh, all of these scientists and experts together created that. And I contributed to that also. I'm happy about that. Yeah, well, you should be very proud. And Drew, you work all your life to make vaccines. I mean, seeing it work for millions of people, you know, and of course, we're going towards billions. Uh, you know, how do you feel about this? So it, it, it's funny. I mean, I, I'm, I'm incredibly happy but my family gets mad at me because I've already moved on to the next thing, to the next vaccines, to the next gene therapies, to the next therapeutic applications. Um, and and you know, they want me to sit back and you know, shower in the joy of, of what we've done, but th that's just not me. Um, I, I'm, I always think to the future about what can we do next? Yes, yeah, tremendous potential is technology. So thank you so much for giving the world your brains, your brilliance, and now, of course, this life-saving technology. Congratulations on the award. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.